Well, welcome. Wow, this it's really great to see all of you. I think I recognize most of you with your masks on. Please remember to remain social distance, keep your masks on throughout the service. If there's masks and bulletins um, at the table up there and hand sanitizer. We also have a basket right here in the middle and a basket up at the table where you first came in um, for offerings. And because everybody's got kind of all kinds of different types of chairs, I will ask you to please just remain seated throughout the service so we don't have people tipping and falling. And... So I'm not getting up out of this. All right. Let us begin with our opening acclamation found. It's found on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer, or it's found in your bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and blessed, blessed be his kingdom, kingdom now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. In the colic of purity, let us say that together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires are known. And from you the secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us say the glory together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Colic of the Day. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now our first reading. A reading from the book of Exodus. you got to turn the mic on. Reading from the book of Exodus. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, Bring up this people. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways, so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider, too, that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, unless you go with us? In this way we shall be distinct, I and your people, from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very same thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, see, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock, 
And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Psalm of Psalm 99, we shall re read responsibly by whole verse. The Lord is King. Let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is high above all peoples. Let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Holy One. O mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God, and fall down before his footstool. He is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among the priests, and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord, and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies in the decree that he gave them. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord our God, and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. The Epistle, Thessalonians 1, verses 1 through 10. Can you hear me? Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God, hit the Father, and he, Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father, you work of faith and labor, of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just as you know what kind of persons we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became Im imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you receive the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you become an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you not only in Ma <clears throat> become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead Jesus who rescues us from the wrath that is coming the word of the Lord Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? 
show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, whose head is this and whose title? They answered, the emperor's. Then he said to them, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Can you hear me? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We've all heard the saying, only two things are certain in life, death and taxes. Jesus knew perfectly well about the tension between God and money or material possessions. He knew about living in two worlds, living in the world, yet not being of the world, where the secular world often takes priority over God's world. He was aware of the constant struggle to keep our priorities straight, being torn by the kingdom of this world and the kingdom of God. Perhaps that's why Jesus talked about the relationship between people and their money or possessions more often than any other subjects in the gospel, more often than even prayer or peace or sharing God's love with others. Jesus understood the power of materialism in our lives. The more goods of the earth we have, the more we feel we need. Luxuries become necessities. What was once extravagance becomes essential. And even worse, the more we have, the more we feel we deserve until the power of materialism separates us from each other and ultimately God. In order to combat the, po combat the power of materialism, we need to give, not because God needs our gifts, but because we need to show God that he is the most important and he rules our lives, not greed. For Jesus said, sorry. For Jesus said, where one's treasure is or one's focus, that is where the heart is also. A priest friend told me a story that seemed to address this very issue. A young man was desperately in need of a job. He prayed daily to God to help him find employment. When he finally found a job, paying a hundred dollars a week, the young man was overjoyed that he promised God he'd give 10% of his income to the church. So he began giving $10 a week, 10% 10 of his hundred dollar income. As time passed, the young man moved on to a higher paying job in which he earned $1,000 a week. While he dutifully put in $100 in the plate each Sunday, over time, it became a, begr a grudging obligation. Finally, he hit the big time, earning $10,000 a week. But he just couldn't bear the thought of putting $1,000 into the plate each Sunday. So he decided to talk to his priest and said, when I made my promise to God to give 10% of my income to the church, I only earned $100 a week. Back then, my promise made sense. But now things are different. Would you please release me from my promise? The priest thought about it for a while and then replied, My son, I can't release you from a promise you made before God, 
but I will gladly pray that your income is reduced to the place where you were comfortable in giving to God, to the original $10 a week. Obviously, the priest took seriously the role of comforting the afflicted and afflicting the comfortable. In this morning's passage from the Gospel of Matthew on the surface, it seems to address a legitimate question. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But in actuality, it was just a trap. Those who asked the question, the Pharisees, the Jewish religious leaders, and the Herodians, the supporters of the Roman King Herod, weren't seeking Jesus' counsel. They were trying to catch him off guard and entrap him because of their mutual hatred of Jesus and their common desire to eliminate him. <clears throat> no matter how Jesus answered the question, he was sure to offend one or the other. The Pharisees hoped that, that Jesus would support paying taxes to Caesar the emperor so they could accuse him of being a Roman sympathizer. The Herodians hoped that Jesus would oppose paying taxes to Caesar so they could accuse him of treason against Rome. So Jesus, rather than answering their questions directly, asked them another question, thus turning their trap inside out and upside down. He demanded, show me the money for the tax and tell me whose head is on the coin. By simply producing a coin with the emperor's image on it, they expose their own hypocrisy. The coin amounted to an idol, a graven image of the one claiming to be divine. Then Jesus said, give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. His statement raises some important questions. How and where does one draw the line between things that belong to the emperor and things that belong to God? Our modern Western minds like to compartmentalize things, leading us to think that some things belong to Caesar and others belong to God. But that misses the point. If we think about this a bit, the image of Caesar was imprinted only on coins, but each one of us is made in the image of God. And we are marked on our heads with oil at our baptism. As the priest says, you are signed, sealed, and marked as Christ's own forever. There is nothing in our lives that is not God's. Our things, as well as ourselves, belong to God. And we are here for God's purpose to be accomplished. And just as the coin bore Caesar's image, we bear God's image. We are an icon, a symbol of God who wants us to be his people and give ourselves freely to him. And our giving to God should come first and not from what we have left over. We shouldn't give ourselves and our gifts to God, whether they are our talents, our time, or our money, because we hope to receive special favors in return, or because God needs anything. We give out of gratitude for what God has already done on our behalf, and for the overwhelming abundance of gifts that God has showered upon us. We give as a concrete sign and statement about our relationship with God. It's not God's need, but rather it's our need to be faithful to God, dedicating ourselves to God's service in the world. All that we are and all that we have belongs to God, who has entrusted us with his creation to be responsible and faithful stewards. 
being good stewards is the lifeblood of how we should function in our community and in the world around us. Recently, a woman in her early 50s went through a life-threatening illness. After her ordeal, she was asked to be a volunteer at a small hospice for people with few resources. Her initial reaction was, I can't do it. However, a friend said to her, it's clear to me that God has given you a special gift of listening. She reluctantly agreed to volunteer. Today, she is one of God's angels on earth who sits and listens to people who are dying. She is a priceless example of the stewardship of compassion. And her friend was also being a good steward of God's gifts by sharing her own talent of identifying and calling forth the specific gifts of ministry in another person. The possibilities are endless to offer back to God from the abundant gifts freely given to us by God. Look around and see what new things God is calling us to do in our community and in the wider world. It doesn't need to be a huge leap of ministry, but rather a simple act of faith. Share your faith in life with someone else. Intentionally pray for them and provide a listening ear, letting them know someone else cares about them. That's what the stewardship of time and talent is all about. Yes, money is also important. The utility bills need to be paid and the budget commitments met. But it's the people who are the church. For God's love is for the faithful who serve him in unlimited stewardship. And it's with truly grateful hearts, O oh God, we give back to you. Amen. Let us say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Okay. Yeah, turn the mic on. You can hear me now. Yes. Prayers of the people, form four. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, 
that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, let us pray for the Episcopal Church, the Most Reverend Michael Curry, presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church. In the Diocesan cycle of prayer, let us pray for all saints, Southern Shores, Reverend Cindy Simpson. In the parish cycle of prayer, let us pray for our nursery caregiver, Christina Mano. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Rob, our bishop, Cindy, our rector, and for all bishops, priests, military chaplains, and deacons. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation lord in your mercy hear our prayer. we commend men to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom hear our prayer, hear our prayer. lord have mercy <clears throat> Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, for our parish members, for our friends and family and for those who serve in the armed forces. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace to all of you. Peace, peace. I'm going to look at y'all. First off, does anybody have any birthdays between October 1st through the 18th? If you do, please stand up carefully. And I will be glad to do a prayer for you. Tiny's birthday today. Wow. We got some more Rogers and Pats and Chris's. Got all the birthdays since March. <laughs> Let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of your life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday. Next, do we have any anniversaries between October 1st and the 18th? For our anniversary blessing? Stand up. Nobody? Okay. Um, from our news updates, the good, um, St. Anne's Good News, uh, stewardship letters were mailed out the 14th. We hope you've all had a chance to reflect 
on your time, talents, and your treasures. And hopefully you have been able to get the green cards in with your times and talents and your pledge cards. Um, we need them to be submitted by November 2nd, either at the office or online. If you need any help with any of this, like online or getting it to the office, please call the office and we'll make sure we get your pledges. All Saints Day is Sunday, November 1st. If you'd like to include names of loved ones who have passed away since last All Saints Day in 2019, please call the office or email your names in to Ashley. Unseen guest needs. Due to limited supply, we are asking for frozen meal donations, and you can pick up the food trays at the office. You may drop off the frozen meals um, during office hours. Next, anyone interested in being a delegate to our virtual diocesan convention, which is going to be in February 2021, I can't remember the exact date, but we'll let you know, it's going to be a Saturday and it's going to be virtual so um please get in touch with uh, myself or alicia alford if you're interested in serving as a delegate it's going to be an interesting process to go through virtually and they made it on saturday so those of you that work um could be able to do that because normally it kind of excludes people because it's usually three days and next we have a special present for Melody. And, well, a couple presents. One is from all of us, and then there's a couple individual ones. This one's from all of us, and I'll give you this if you want to take a look at it. Um, if you haven't already heard, Melody is going to Eastern Shore Chapel to be an associate priest there. I don't know what's causing all the wind, but or the wind's causing it. But um, and she's going to be up at Virginia Beach, if I remember correctly. She's going to be moving on November second through that whole week, moving up there. They found a beautiful home up there, so all things have come together for her. It's been really, really wonderful. And Melly, it's going to—it's just been a pleasure to have you all, you and your family, which are some of them are back there and some are over here. Um, We've had a wonderful blessing to have you with us. And I want to get real emotional, and I'm going to try not to get too emotional because then I'll start crying and fog up. And Anyway, I will very much miss you. I know all of us will miss you. And please come back and visit us. Yeah. Thank you all so much. For your generosity i feel so blessed i am it is so good to see you all in person this is wonderful and i am so grateful that we got to gather together before we move in about two weeks um, i think i would have felt so sad to have left and not been able to see you all together like this so i i'm just so grateful um, to see you all in person as cindy shared i'll be uh, an associate at eastern shore chapel in virginia beach and I think this is the fastest turnaround move that we have ever done as a military family. Um, I think we're trying to compress what normally would take us three or four months of paperwork and decision making into about four weeks. And so that's been super exciting at our house. Um, I just want to thank you all so much for being so supportive of me during my field education. I have to laugh because when I chose to come to St. Anne's after, you know, being married to a clergy person in a very non-traditional setting, you know, moving up and down the, the, the East Coast, my thought was, you know, I just want to know what a normal priest does in a normal setting and just, <laughs> and after hurricanes and pandemic, there has been nothing normal about my field education, so it'll be exciting what God has in store <laughs> for future ministry. Um, it looks like I could probably, uh, well, I don't wanna, I don't wanna like jinx it or anything, but I feel prepared to handle almost anything. <laughs> so, 
so I don't know, maybe Jesus will come back in the next couple of years and set us all straight and, and that'll be something to prepare for. But again, thank you so much for your support, your generosity. Um, I have loved coming here. You all are an amazing congregation. And before I do a dismissal at the end of the service, I am going to take a sort of video selfie with all of y'all waving. So be prepared for that. Thank you. Well, Melody, we're going to probably get together sometime in the new year after the pandemic's over. Maybe we'll take a road trip and we'll all show up at your church for you on a Sunday. Yes, she asked if I'd do a prayer for you all. Almighty and gracious and loving God, be with Melody and her family as they journey to Virginia Beach. Make her ministry be wonderful and grow and be fruitful and keep her husband safe as he goes abroad. Take care of the ch all of her children. Make their school experiences and their new home be wonderful for them. And dear Lord, keep Melody and her family always in our hearts. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. <laughs> now we're going to continue with our confession of sin. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.